All right, it is time for our reading, reflection, and check-in. Let's see how May went. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you the results of my reading from May 2019. Um, I will go through my stats, how much I read, what genres they were, these kinds of things, what format it was, fun good stuff. I will share my reading tracking for the month, um, take a look back at what my theme was for the month. Did I achieve my goals? Did I? Did I? Um, and I will also take a look at my projects, how I'm doing with those, as well as my series reading. How is that going? <laughs> and I'll round things off by sharing my biggest accomplishment for the month, as well as my top five favorite books. And I also have an honorable mention this month as well. So lots to enjoy. Let's get to it. This one does tend to be a little number and stats heavy. I like stats, so I have no problem with that. <laughs> Let's look at May. So my total number of titles read in May was 33 titles, which is an increase from April, which was 27. So I was like, what? And the total number of pages read in May was 6,660. Also an increase from May or from April. Those are both big surprises. I did not think I would surpass 27 titles in 6,000 some odd pages. Like I just really didn't, and I didn't plan on it. So I feel a bit weird about it. Like I feel like I should be like, this is amazing. But I'm also kind of like, wow, that's a lot. Is that okay? Is that too much? What's going on? So I don't know how I feel about it. Like I'm excited. It's a big number, but I didn't mean to read that much. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's take a look at the um, types of works they were. So I read seven novels this month. I read five nonfiction works. I read two short forms. One was a novella. I can't remember what the other one was. I read 10 issues of manga or 10 volumes of manga. One was an omnibus. At least one was an omnibus. Um, I didn't break it down further than that. 10 titles were manga. Um, eight titles were graphic novels. And one was a comic. And I think it was a collection. So I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure the comic was like, I don't know, it was like over 100 pages, but it literally was like single panel or four panel comics. Like that's what it was. So it didn't feel like a graphic novel. So I put it in comic, I think. I don't know. I can't remember all the things anymore. There's too many. <laughs> Let's look at the age breakdown. Uh, 22 of the titles I read were geared towards adults. I read eight titles that are geared towards kids. And as running uh, in the and I read three that were YA. YA does tend to be the lowest. I think last month I read more YA than kids, which was unusual. But um, this month, uh, back to YA being the last, <laughs> the last one, <laughs> it fluxes a bit. But usually I read the least YA. But I did read three, so that's actually still a fair amount. Um, in terms of genres, this is the biggest shocker of the month for me. I read the the most out of any genre I read was eight titles, and that was eight titles of historical fiction. <laughs> historical fiction, me. I read like three a year. What, what happened was is two of the manga series that I'm reading are historical fiction, Blade of the Immortal and uh, Golden Camway. Um, man, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, those are both historical fiction, and I burn through several of each of those series. So eight historical fictions. <laughs> I read six titles of urban fantasy and six titles of horror, which is actually a fair amount of horror for me. Um, five nonfiction, and then two each of science fiction and romance, and one each of classics, mystery, adventure and humor and I had to add humor as a category I did not have it set up I had it like way way back uh, set up but I don't tend to read a lot of humor but I had to add it in this month so I read one humor book <laughs> in terms of format I read 14 physical books and 15 books on my tablet so those are pretty even odds there I read three books on my kindle I'm still really missing reading on my kindle so I think that will I'll shift that will shift soon I bet um, and I read one audiobook, which seems to be my new normal, and I'm happy with that. Um, I don't tend to read a lot of audio, um, but I tend to read nonfiction uh, books on audio, and one a month of those has been actually really good and really inspiring and has often ended up being some of my favorites. So yay for that. Yay! Okay, so looking at theme, my monthly theme for this month was to read Moby Dick, or for May, was to read Moby Dick and to enjoy the library. Um, I wasn't planning on finishing Moby Dick, um, 
like in my TBR, I said I won't finish it because it's so long. But like in my heart, I really wanted to finish it within the month of May. I did not. But I read 500 out of the 655 pages of Moby Dick in May, and I have since finished it. So um, yeah, so I, I guess I succeeded on that. So go Shannon. Um, and enjoying the library, I definitely did that. I made two trips to the library. I participated in Borrowathon, which is all about borrowing books. So I read library books that entire week and throughout the month. And 21 out of the 33 titles I read were from the library, either physical books or I read on Overdrive or uh, not. I don't think I even included Hoopla in that. So that is a lot of library reading. So I really, I really, I think I, that was a big huge check mark for that. Um, so we can take a look at my tracking for the month. I actually decided, this is one time where I decided ahead of time on a color scheme. So I did an analogous color scheme of going from uh, orange, pinks, red, and then I don't know if I got to any purples. Um, so that is how it worked out on, ooh, gotta go way back here because I read a lot of titles. I even had to double up some of them, but they were um, like, part of the same series when I did two on the same on the same line. And then for Borrowathon, I decided to go with blues because then it would be very visually different. You can see I did not finish all of my Borrowathon books. <laughs> so that's my my book tracking and then my daily tracking looked like this. And I did end up reading Moby Dick every day. So the first little line of color, the first little bit of orange is always Moby Dick, because I do them in order. And I had some really, really epic days, often reading a lot of graphic works, but still, the, when, they're, when they have the diagonal line, that means it's a graphic work. And I read graphic works every day. So one of the things I'm tracking in June is I am tracking um, how much I read that is prose versus how much I read, not versus, but how much is prose and how much is graphic, just because I'm curious. So yeah, so I shared my, tra that's my tracking. Um, I really like how it looked, but it ended up taking a lot of time. So that ended up coming into one of my learnings of the month, which was that that takes a lot of time. Like for example, there was, I, I got behind for three days. And so when I worked on um, catching up with it and doing it again and again, it took me like 45 minutes to an hour to do all of that and to do the pictures. And I was doing little videos. I didn't share them, but I wanted to make a, like a, like a one second video for the tracking and I did it, but I don't know if I love how it turned out. Um, so because it's a little jarring and sometimes the focus wasn't always great anyway. But um, yeah, what I learned, unfortunately, is that I'm actually, that feels like a lot of time. And although I love having the beautiful visual record, I wasn't, I'm, I'm taking June off from doing visual tracking um, in that way. And I'm doing something else, which I might share at the end. Um, but it's not as visually interesting. It's more just numbers. So yeah, so it's beautiful. And I loved it. But I'm feeling like it was taking more time than I wanted it to take. And I think I'd rather use that time doing other things. I probably will come back to it. This is something I often take a month off of. I, I did in, in January as well. And sometime last year, sometimes it's really engaging and inspiring and motivating. And other times it feels like, <laughs> so for June, I was feeling a little, uh, so I'm letting it go for now. Um, the other big learning that I had for this month was a, a bit of an unfortunate one. And that is, it doesn't have to do with Moby Dick, but it, books that are 500 pages or more that are physical editions, I think I need to start to say no to, especially if they're hardcover. I was reading the Magnus Chase um, book two in hardcover and it just, my hands were hurting too much. And um, that was one of the, that happened during Borrowthon. And I ended up, thankfully it was available for over, on Overdrive. So I just switched and read it on my tablet. But when I read a lot of physical editions at the same time, it's not, my hands get sore and it makes me sad, but I think it's time for me to say no to books that are over 500 pages. Just get them on Kindle, borrow them through Overdrive, no more buying books that are more. Of course, there will be an exception here and there. And of course, I have stuff in my, like I have books that are more than 500 pages um, that I probably will try, still try and read. But generally, I think it's time to switch over when it's that long, just go digital just go digital. And so we'll see how that goes. But that was one of my learnings. Not one of the funner learnings. Neither of the learnings this month were fun. So let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Sometimes
sometimes that happens, you know, it just does. Okay, so looking at projects, um, um, let's, yeah, let's take a look and see how my projects went the month, this month. So I read five books for the Stacking the Series Challenge that's hosted by Sarah from Steeped in Books. Um, and I can't remember my total. I think I'm up to, I have 51 left. So I think I have, I think I read, oh, I've read one since then, so I'm not sure. I have to read 78 throughout the year, and I've been averaging between 5, 6, and 7. Um, and so 5 wasn't bad. I read two titles in the Fables graphic novel series, two titles in the Last Apprentice series by Joseph Delaney, and I read the final book in the Space Odyssey series, which completed another stack. So now I'm done my level 1, level 2 level three and level four stacks. So I think I'm, I think that's right. I think I've done four stacks. So that feels really good. So even though I didn't hit the number, I did make really good progression on the project overall. Um, in terms of other projects that I'm working on, I read two nonfiction art titles. I read two of my A to Z graphic novel titles. I got two more letters. Um, I got one more letter for romance, which means one of the other romances I read, I already had the letter, grr. <laughs> Gotta be more careful on that. <laughs> I read one productivity and practices book and I participated in one readathon which was borrowathon and I had so much fun doing that. I unfortunately have lots of donuts in terms of my uh, other projects because I read zero titles for my those books project, zero titles for sci-fi fantasy and weird, zero titles for TBR and wrappings, oh my gosh, zero titles for book to film adaptations for my book to film project and zero oldest on my goodreads TBR and zero memoirs. <laughs> so that's a lot of projects I didn't make any progress on. And it was weird because in June, I thought I'm going to like really cram in and read anything that will hit multiple targets and really get strategic. And then I was like, nope, don't feel like doing that. So I am not going to harp on that. There are some, even though I read zero for my Those Books project, I'm still in the clear for that because my target is actually rather low this year. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I started to get strategic. It didn't feel good. I'm going to let it go. There's still lots of the reading year left. It's I have very highly ambitious goals. And there's no, there's, there's no, you know, if I don't meet them, it's no big deal. <laughs> it's no big deal. Um, although, of course, I still want to, I still want to hit them. But you know, anyway, it wasn't feeling good to try and be like, like, like a, what's that called? Like you have an angry coach. There's like a term for that. I can't think of it. Anyway, I beat my, I I'm decided I'm not going to beat myself up over it. It's not what I feel like. I don't feel like getting super projecty this month, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe my September will be all series and all like projects. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how weather year takes us. Speaking of series, let's take a look and see how my series reading went for the month. Um, out of the 33 books that I read this month, 24 were books in series. And so that is 73%. So the vast majority of the books, again, I read this month were for series. I did start several new series. I started the All the Wrong Questions series by Lemony Snicket. Um, the, and by reading the first book, Who Could That Be um, at this hour? I'm reading this with Izzy, Punk Rock OPA. We're doing it as a buddy read. And I started Fruits Basket. Oh my gosh, this is by Natsuki Takaya. 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 Um, and wow, this really is just as cute and wonderful and sweet and engaging and fun as everyone says. I understand why it is a popular title, why it is it's an eight guys title. It is really, really great. I read the first volume in May and I've since read the second volume and I definitely plan on continuing the series. The third is actually waiting for me at the library. Um, and then I also started um, Blackbird by Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartel, which is a graphic novel series. I read the first volume, really enjoyed it. It's an urban fantasy um, young adult title and I really quite enjoyed it. So that is the um, series that, those are the three series that I started. Um, and then 16 of the books that I read um, caught, like were continuous, just like the next book in series reading. So I, I made lots of progress <laughs> in terms of reading series. I did catch up with one series, which was Moonstruck, which is another graphic novel series. To, but to be quite honest, I'll probably end up DNFing it. But technically right now I'm putting it in caught up because I've read the first two volumes and the third one isn't out yet. It's another YA urban fantasy and there's some really good stuff in it. I particularly like the centaur character, but I didn't enjoy the second one as much as the first and I only 
like I think the first one I only gave three stars to so you know I'll see if you know when the third one comes out if I feel like reading it so for now it's like I've caught up with it but it, it could potentially be a DNF I did end up DNFing three series, two of which are ones that I read the first volume and I'm just calling it quits here, one of which is one that I caught up with and I'm calling it quits, which was Trees. I felt the second volume of Trees felt completely different than the first one and I was, all of the things that I enjoyed about it were not there, it added elements I didn't enjoy. It's a sort of post-apocalyptic science fiction series um, and I just, I was like, what? So anyway, so I decided to DNF it even though in terms of the graphic novels, the second one is the, the most recent one. Um, so that was a bit strange. So yeah, and thanks for everyone for the feedback on whether you consider reading the first book and not continuing a DNF or not. It was really helpful. It was fun to talk about that because I did, I do still struggle with it, but I have a clearer picture on how I feel about it. So thanks everyone who mentioned, who commented last month on that as a, you know, what would you do in this situation? <laughs> and then rounding things out, I did complete one series. I already mentioned this. Um, and then that was the Space Odyssey series by Arthur C. Clarke. This is a science fiction series that is four books 2001 2010 2061 and 3001 um i did enjoy uh, like all of the books oddly 2061 was my favorite i think because it was the world i've seen the movies for the first two books um so 2061 was like the first time it was a new story in this world um and it's a sort of realistic science fiction near future thingy um and um and so it really, it really, and it was also, 2061 was a very fun adventure story. Unfortunately, 3001, I did not enjoy as much. It was quite similar to, that, to 2061, so I was expecting something new and exciting, and it felt something familiar and good. So it was a bit of a, like, kind of way to end a series, but I did finish a series, so I'm counting it as a win. And I think I rated them all four stars or above, so it was very good. I like Arthur C. Clarke. He's definitely shaping up to be one of my favorite authors, um, so that's really fun. Um, and so now looking at series at, or series in terms of the year. Um, so I so this year my year to date stats for the series. Uh, this year I've started nineteen series. I have read 47, 47 books that are the next book in a series. Overall, I have caught up with four series. I have DNF'd six series, and I have completed four series, which feels a little low. I thought maybe it's kind of weird when the DNFs are harder than the higher than the completes, but eh, you know that must be that's that's just the truth right now. And then in terms of my book backlog, this one always makes me laugh. So the total number of series that I have in backlog. So I'm current. I read one book this year of 27 different series. So I've read at least one book in 27 different series <laughs> that I don't think I've completed. I think that's how the stat works. And then if I was to read all of the books in ongoing series that I am currently reading, I would need to read 38 titles. And if I was going to read all of the books in all of the completed series that I've started, I would need to read 273 titles. So to be 100% completely up to date with all of the books in ongoing and completed series, I would need to read 312 titles. <laughs> I love that one. It makes me laugh. I always wonder, like, I think it actually, uh, like, I wonder if um, it'll ever go down. <laughs> <laughs> and if by the end of the year I will be like under 300 or even over 400, I don't know if I want to know. I don't know if I want to know that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so in terms of achievement, I had a hard time coming up with what my biggest achievement this month was because I think honestly it was a bit subtle in terms of recognizing that some things that aren't working um, and that I needed a break because I'm taking a bit of a YouTube break and... Um, and I'm taking a break from the tracking and so I'm realizing that I want to shift some of my priorities, mostly time priorities, and that is going to impact my reading. So it's weird that I feel like my biggest achievement is actually letting go of some things for now and sort of seeing where the road takes me or what path I want to take and I don't know what it is. It's very uncomfortable. I don't like this. I'm very much a planner and very much a like do the thing and say the thing and do the thing. But I like making choices along the way. So that means with goals and projects, often it makes sense for me only to make 
the next couple of choices or take the next couple of steps and not plan it all out. But right now, I just feel like I need to just sort of like, just sort of see what happens. Just have a fun month or something like where it's a little less planned. But it's also hard because like, because I like planning and planning is the fun. I'm resisting, like I'm sort of like combating between the two things. Not really, like I'm not stressed about it, but it's just, you know, recognizing that, you know, I need some time to just sort of chill and just see what happens. And the resistance on doing that is is hard, is is challenging. And the resistance, I also have a couple of new projects I want to start and resisting doing that is also hard because I realize it's not, it doesn't make sense to do that. So I don't know. So that is oddly my biggest achievement of the month is disengaging, <laughs> recognizing that that is the most important, the most effective thing to do right now and just seeing where it goes. So like, bleh, don't like it, do not like it. Um, I realized I forgot to show you my reading tracking that I'm doing this month. Is this the best time to do that? I guess it is because I said it is. Um, and then I will end off with my favorites. So this is the reading tracking I'm doing this month. It is very low key. And um, I just have the list of titles here. It's sideways and then very bullet journal month, you know, days of the month. And then under each spot, I wrote how many pages I read. And then once I finish a book, I draw a line. So I finished a bunch of books recently. So, and then on the side, I'm noting how many pages of prose, how many pages of graphic works, and then the total. So this is like, because I've been doing this and it's just, I just sort of came up with it that ran, like, I don't know how. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if this is interesting. So I haven't been sharing it on Instagram or Twitter where I often share my reading tracking. So I'm just sharing it here so you can have a look at it. Um, I did, I have been reading the bullet journal method, which is really good. Um, and, um, and I've been realizing, you know, that the, sometimes the form can overtake the function. That's not true. Sometimes the design and, and, and making it look pretty and making it look interesting and engaging can override the function not override it but like anyway I've already said this I've it's the the way I was doing it was taking a lot of time right now I just need the numbers so it doesn't need to be pretty and so I'm, I'm stepping away from that because I would like to use that time to do other stuff including art and so we'll see if that happens hopefully it does anyway uh, now I'm just reiterating things so yeah so that's how I'm doing reading tracking this month I guess let me know if you would find that interesting on Instagram I feel like it's not my handwriting isn't very clear, so, but it might be worth sharing a couple of times and see if it is interesting. Um, but I just worry that it's too small and too, not super clear. And also like might just look like some strange, <laughs> like accounting system, which technically it is. Anyway, on to the favorites of the month. My honorable mention this month is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Um, I absolutely adored reading this. This was a reread and that's why I'm considering it an honorable mention. I gave it a 10 out of 10. I think it will always, any time in my life I read it, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Um, it was just a joy to read. It's a really wonderful story. If you haven't read it, highly recommend it. It's a kid's book with illustrations. It did not take a lot of time. It's just really, really wonderful. And then my fourth favorite book was actually Blackbird by Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartel. Um, I was really happy to read this one. I, I heard about it through watching TBRs for Panelathon, which was um, a, a comics, manga, and graphic novel um, readathon um, that happened at the exact same time as Borrowathon. So I ended up not participating because I couldn't do both at the same time. But this was one of the hosts' pick for um, like a read along, like a read along through the readathon. And so I checked it out. It's a 2019 title. It was available on Hoopla. I was like, that looks interesting. Loved it. As I already mentioned, it's an urban fantasy. It's about a young girl who believes in, I think they're called paragons, these sort of like gods living among us, sort of, or gods. And after she has a sort of strange experience or unusual experience, but no one else believes her, no one else believes in them. And so Jim Pachi very strongly believes that they exist and so it's about her journey through that um I really enjoyed it there is a little bit of like naggy like like 
sort of like mom what was me kind of stuff but you know beyond that i i really enjoyed it and i like the world i love the colors the the art and the colors are extraordinary they're very vibrant um and it was a really great read so i'm really happy that i ended up uh seeing all the panels on tbrs and uh, hearing about this title that way so that was really wonderful so i semi participated because i read i think i read it during panel <laughs> But I didn't do a TBR in, in anyway. So yeah, I got to keep my eye on that and see if they do another round because it looked really, really fun. Uh, next up was is Mastering Sketching, a complete series. Nope. A Complete Course in 40 Lessons by Judy Martin. This I got from the library. It was just a random pick off the shelf. Um, I really enjoyed it. I wanna, It doesn't feel like super um structurally like 40 lessons like go do this like get a this kind of pen and this kind of book and do this kind of thing but it is like sketching outdoors using perspective uh uh life drawing or figure drawing of uh, um what's it called uh, like landscape like it does and it does have lots of ideas and examples for each of those things so after I read it I did come up with a list of exercises that were either directly from this or inspired by this and I would like to work my way through them um, I am trying to do more art so hopefully that will help and it definitely was a great read uh, next up, Grit, uh, The Power and of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth. Um, I listened to this on audiobook. It is narrated by the author. It's available on Scribd. Um, and I loved it. I loved it. It is a bit science, not science heavy, but there are lots of scientific studies and examples and um, but like for me, I ended up being really gritty, um, which is shouldn't be a huge shock to me. Um, there was a grit, uh, a grit test on her website, and um, and it's about like sticking with something for a significant period of time. And um, I really do like there. I have a drive to do that. I am an achievement oriented person. I am a results oriented person. I like knowing a lot about certain things and or lots of things or all the things. And it was a nice refresher for me to hear someone talk about this perspective in a positive manner. Um, I think I just have been hearing a lot of talk like like there is importance of not getting hyper focused and like not like it's also important to attend to multiple things in your life, you know, but um, I feel like a lot of, um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm trying to say. Uh, I feel like right now there is a pretty, there is some, not messaging, that's a little too harsh. Uh, I'm just gonna say I appreciated someone who had the perspective of a uh, positive perspective on sticking with something as opposed to um, only doing the easy route or only doing or finding a way to go around something or a, a cheat or a hack. It's like, no, there's there's power in, you know, learning something really well and sticking with it over time. So I appreciate that. So yeah, so that was rather inarticulate, but hopefully I got articulate at the end. Uh, my fourth favorite book was the, the, this is so good. So this is the Dictionary of Ordinary and Extraordinary Animals. This was by Lisa McGinnis and Leslie Jonath, and it is illustrated by Lisa Congdon, who I know as an uh, illustrator, artist, and instructor. She um, teaches courses over at Creative Bug. I think she's doing some somewhere else. I would leave her website and her Instagram down below. She's an awesome person. I really, really enjoy her work. And I, this was all like, this was so much fun to read. Um, it is literally a dictionary. It's a kid's book. Um, and it has these amazing illustration of the animals and then information about the animals and fun facts. And I just loved it. I read it during Barwathon and I absolutely adored it. There were actually animals in here I had never heard of before. Um, it does have um, also sea creatures um, and also has some creepy crawlers, which I was not expecting and was a little like, Ah, ready to get off this page um, <laughs> but overall it was a joy to read it was a joy to read and my favorite most favorite book of the month was body language so this is um heart and brain body language uh, uh oh oh it doesn't have the author here no 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 that's not good oh i will leave it below so this is an awkward Yeti collection, um, and it is a comic. This was, I had to add humor, and this was also my comic. So we have 
heart and we have brain and we also have gut and then there's also body and eyes and other body parts too but mostly it's heart and brain and they they disagree because the heart wants to do one thing and the brain wants to do another thing and that struggle is real <laughs> so there was lots of relatable wonderful moments in this book about that struggle and who wins or loses or both or neither like it's just really it was a complete joy to read I spaced it over days so I could enjoy it for longer because I just I related so much <laughs> to the characters as I think we all do I think that struggle is that I should do this I want to do this let's plan let's explore like it's all of like it's just yeah yeah so anyway so that was it I am ready for my hello June um so that is how my month of way went as I mentioned I think I feel like pretty good about it and I have made some shifts and some changes and it is a bit weird and I'm finding how I'm trying to let myself find that and um, see what works with that and see where the month goes. I do have some video plans for June, so there will be some videos up on the channel, but it is going to be a lighter month. And, um, but apparently, but you know, there still has already been a lot of reading. Um, I do uh, still post a lot on Instagram and on Twitter, Instagram a little bit more, but um, yeah. So if um, you want to say hi, that is pretty much a good place to find me for June. And uh, we'll see how long this goes. I already miss making videos and it's been like a week, so <laughs> it might not last <laughs> the whole month. We shall see. Let me know how your June went or how your May went and maybe what your favorite book of the month was or what you learned this month about yourself and your reading because I certainly learned a lot and not all things that I wanted to, but still they are all valuable. Okay, thank you so much for watching.